Hello and welcome to this video in which we are going to discuss the four biggest challenges that students face when they start preparing for PE power exam. But before we dive into the content, I would really appreciate if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section and I will try to respond back to them. The first biggest challenge that is encountered by students who are preparing for the PE power exam is busy schedule. Majority of the students who are enrolled in my PE Power course, I would say more than 90-95% of the students are actually working full-time. On top of the professional commitments, the full-time job, you also have personal commitments. And that basically means that you are left with a very small amount of time on a daily basis that you can allocate towards your PE Power exam preparation. In a separate video, I go over typical timelines as to how long it takes to prepare for the PE Power exam. You can check out that video. But on average, it would take anywhere between four to six months. And again, this is a wide range. It could sometimes take even seven months, depending on what your starting point is. In order to address this challenge, I recommend that you start slow, gain momentum and develop consistency. So if you like to wake up early in the morning, maybe waking up half an hour earlier and dedicating that time to your PE power exam preparation can help you gain some traction. Now, if you have some time during lunch at work, then maybe find a spot maybe on your desk or if you're working from home, then try and reserve a portion of your lunch time towards studying. Similarly, if you're able to allocate some time right after work, then do that before sleeping. So whatever works with your schedule, start small, make notes in your diary or your journal and keep track of how many hours you are putting in. When you look at your progress on a weekly basis, and hopefully it's an upward trajectory, you will actually gain confidence and motivation to keep that trajectory going. And in order to maintain that, you will subconsciously try and study. The other tip that I can provide you is that make your environment conducive to studying. So if you have a space in your house uh, where you're basically working from home, in like a home office type of setup, so make sure that you have easy access to your PE Power Exam preparation material so that as soon as you get done with your work, you can jump onto your PE Power Exam preparation. If the books are right in front of you, if your calculator is there, if you don't have to run around and find pens and papers, then that additional inertia or the friction that you have to overcome will not be there. And you will be able to sort of dive right into your exam preparation mode as soon as you find that 15 minute half an hour or one hour time slot. The second biggest challenge that I see students encountering when they're preparing for the PE Power exam is that they are not using the effective exam preparation resources or the exam preparation resources that they're using is not helping them streamline their exam preparation effort. Now, in my opinion, the single biggest constraint that you're working with is your time. Because in, as I said, majority of my students who are enrolled in my PE Power course are actually working full time. Now, let's say you have that time carved out out of your daily schedule and you're able to build momentum, but if you're not using effective exam preparation resources, it could potentially put you in a spiral where you can get frustrated, you're not following the content properly, you get overwhelmed, or the worst case scenario is that you actually quit your exam preparation effort. Whereas when you're dealing with effective exam preparation resources, they are essentially going to handhold you and walk you through all the knowledge areas that you need to know, provide you the necessary explanations and practice. Now I'd like to emphasize on the explanation portion because PE Power exam as compared to the FE electrical and computer exam is really a test of your in-depth understanding of the concepts as compared to FE. But if you've been out of school for let's say five, seven, 10, 15 years, then developing that depth of understanding in a broad range of topics from mathematics to software becomes very challenging. So you have to study smartly and make sure that you know at least enough in order to comfortably pass the exam. But when it comes to the PE Power exam, it's a different ball game altogether. When you go through the PE Power exam specification, it is divided into four sections, general power engineering, it covers a lot of content, but there's a lot of overlap in between. Then you have circuits, you have power devices um, in the form of motors, transformers, induction motors, synchronous motors, and analysis at the end, which also includes protection. A big component is the code. 
And this is where if you don't have industry experience, students struggle. But if you're using effective exam preparation resources, then each of those knowledge areas are going to be explained simply, or they should be explained simply and in depth because you cannot compromise on depth of understanding because just knowing the concept and formulas is most likely not going to help you pass the exam. So effective exam preparation resources can make your journey a lot easier and maybe even fun because you're already potentially working as a power systems engineer and this is a great opportunity to brush up on the concepts which are fairly abstract such as uh, symmetrical components, such as per unit systems, such as uh, protection, such as grounding. So you will probably not get an opportunity again to sort of go through a wide range of these topics and prepare for them or review them in such a short amount of time. So look at this opportunity as a great chance for you to actually do a fast track review of entire power systems engineering. The third biggest challenge that some of the students face is that they are either not working as design engineers or they don't have much experience with the code or their job responsibilities do not involve a lot of calculations or analysis and so on and so forth. So I regularly get emails when students are starting their P-Power exam preparation using my course that, Wasim, what do you think about the fact that, okay, I'm working as an engineer, but I don't do a lot of design work. I don't use a lot of code. Can I still pass the exam? And my answer to them is look at this as a great opportunity for you to actually learn things that you probably have a basic or intermediate understanding and develop on it. Even if there's certain areas of the specification which you have never touched, for instance, let's say lighting or grounding or codes, I have a lot of students who are internationally trained, so they might have used some of the code uh, in different part of the world, but they have zero experience with NEC or NFPA 70 e So what I try and do is to, first of all, give them confidence that don't be scared of code or design. Anything can be learned. And especially if you're using effective exam preparation resources, it is going to help you learn those things effectively, quickly, in simple enough terms so that you can retain that and add that knowledge base to your day-to-day -day job as well. I have some students who want to be done with both of these exams, either close to their graduation, prior to gra their graduation, or right after graduation. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because these students actually don't have any industrial experience. So look at it as a great opportunity for you to dive into things that you haven't seen before and make it a personal mission to gain expertise and knowledge in those topics. And the fourth biggest challenge that I see students facing when they're preparing for the P-Power exam is the fear of failure. Now, these students have already passed the FE exam in majority of the cases, or they have got an exemption. Now, majority of the employers actually pay for the expenses associated with the PE power exam and the PE licensing. In most of the cases, I would say more than 90% of the cases I see employers reimbursing students for their PE power, which is great, but it's, it's sort of a double-edged sword because now the students are sort of under pressure. They know that their employer knows that he or she is taking the exam maybe four or five months from now and you're subconsciously thinking about, okay, what if I fail the exam? I'll still have to let my supervisor or HR know, and it sort of puts additional pressure on you. My advice to students is that the fact that your employer is keen um, on getting you licensed also tells that most likely they would have some sort of bonus or promotion or salary raise associated with that. They would basically incentivize and reward you for the additional responsibility that you're willing to take. So look at that element positively as well. And when it comes to just studying, keep a growth mindset where you're trying to learn and repel any type of pressure that you might be getting under. Alternatively, you can uh, register for the exam, look at your company policy. A lot of times they actually want you to pay the fees upfront and then once you pass the exam and then you get reimbursed. So take a look at how you can avoid getting unnecessarily under pressure just because a few other people know about the fact that you're taking the exam. Your focus should be exam preparation, your focus should be learning, and any of these distractions, any of these fears, you have to sort of stem them out. Let me know your thoughts on the four biggest challenges that we discussed 
And if you have other challenges that you've encountered or if you see your friends and colleagues encountering, I would really appreciate if you can mention them in the comments section of this video. Thank you.